I think the first thing I want to know is explain the Hyperloop ecosystem for us. I feel like it's an, entire, an entirely new tech world that has spawned out of a single Elon Musk white paper. How does it work? How are you related to Elon Musk? Just give us the, give us the, the 10,000 feet view. All right, so most people, when they think of the Hyperloop, think of Elon Musk. Mm. But in real, it actually is, it's an idea that we had for hundreds of years. So one of the first attempts, for example, was in 1870 already. In New York, they, um, there was a company, they wanted to build a tunnel and move these vehicles through pressure difference from New York to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. They actually built a station. Oh, wow. They built a part of the track and moved people around. What was this thing made of? <laughs> it was wooden <laughs> carriages. So this was actually before the New York subway. Mm -hmm. right? so, so we have been all, we are all grew up with uh, the thought of traveling inside a tube. So the first patent for a train inside a vacuum dates back to 1904. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Elon Musk at the end, um, he was just looking at the overall sector and he was like, hey, you know, we haven't really done a lot in the rail industry. Mm -hmm. We're building old systems still the same way we used to. I mean, the distance between the rails, for example, that's given by the Roman carriage. Right. So today, in 2017, that's how we build infrastructure, based on the butt, the butt of two horses, basically. Right. So. That's how much innovation we have done there. And then if you look at, does it even make sense? It doesn't. Mm. There's no rail line, no metro line in the whole world that's profitable. Mm. So the Hyperloop is really just taking a step back, thinking about how can we do something better? Mm. What exists? What technologies exist today? Mm. And how can we solve all of these issues? Right. So Elon proposed this idea and then said that he was too busy to work on it uh, because he was too busy with Tesla and SpaceX. He wanted some else to pick man. it up. And um, yeah, so we were the first ones. Mm -hmm. So we're not related. <laughs> um, he's not involved in what we do or whatever anybody else does. He started off doing the boring company, I think, to also makes that fairly clear. They're doing tunneling, mm. which is an important part of what we need to do. But um, you know, it's, it's complementary. Mm. Right. And there's sort of lots of different models of how the Hyperloop will be deployed. You know, will it be San Francisco to LA kind of travel? Will it be just you know, long commutes into New York City? Like what, first of all, give us a realistic end date for when we're actually going to get one of these things. And second of all, where? What, what's the scenario? What's, where is it going to work best first? So we started working in 2013, so we've been working now for over four years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a technology challenge. I think that most of the people here are scientists. So, uh, of course, I mean, you need to put these technologies together. It's a system integration challenge, if mm -hmm. you want so. But uh, we know how to build pylons, we know how to build tubes, we know how to create a vacuum inside a tube. Over the last couple of decades, some of the technologies have been advancing quite well, so that today it actually makes economical sense to do them. So we're able to advance this in vacuum technology to maintain a vacuum in a very cheap manner. Mm. We're able to have, uh, you know, with the latest battery technologies, um, batteries that where it actually makes sense to move them because years ago they would be, have been way too heavy, mm. right? So um, in terms of the technology, it exists. We are now ready to build. We actually already started. We started uh, construction of the first capsule, mm -hmm. the first full-scale passenger capsule. We're working now with, I think, something like eight governments all around the world because the real challenge is actually to create uh, the new uh, legislative framework. So this is a completely new mode of transportation. It's not a plane, it's not, an, it's not a train, so you need new laws. You need to make sure that people are safe, right? Mm -hmm. So and that's the hurdle. That's really what it takes. I mean, the, you know, we've got fast trains, we've got Shinkansen, you know, why do we need a whole new regulatory framework for what is essentially just a very fast train? Well, I mean, things change quite a lot because the moment you're moving into you're inside a tube, mm -hmm. right, and you're inside basically a vacuum, mm -hmm. there's no air. So, yes, you can, of course, take some of the guidelines from high-speed train, but not all of them. So it's kind of like a mix between 
um, as the aviation industry and the train industry. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay.